Julian. Uh, I'm a, a software developer. You might not recognize me from my photo because I'm not wearing tweed uh, for once. And so I'm trying to have this new look to see how it goes. Uh, I'm from Bath. Uh, just so you know, Bath is not London. So I do not live in London. I live in Bath. Uh, ask for because we have lots and lots of baths. And you may be interested to know that we also have showers. So um, when you come and stay, don't be surprised that if you go to a hotel, there, is, there isn't a bath, there is only a shower. Because we have these big giant communal ones. It's all good. Um, so I work at a really small uh, little open source company called Red Hat uh, on a project called Manage IQ, which manages clouds. You know, being British, I like clouds, and so I manage all of the clouds. Uh, our software is open source, and so you can come and find it on GitHub slash Manage IQ, and we always welcome uh, pull requests, issues, and we're also hiring, so if you want to come and work with me and help me manage clouds, then uh, come talk to me afterwards. Okay, so you might be wondering where the name of this talk came from. Uh, it's more fun to compute. It's actually from the album uh, Computer World by Kraftwerk, which was a really, really... Oh, we have one fan. Yeah. <laughs> which uh, is a really, really good uh, synthesized uh, album. Okay, so, as you may have guessed today, we're going to talk about synths. Um, not these ones from uh, Fallout 4, although they are pretty cool. Uh, these kind of synthesizers, hardware synthesizers. And if you say synthesizers to yourself a lot, one, one, after, one word after another, it gets really, really hard to say, so you should practically go home and try and say synthesizers really, really fast. Right, so I have brought with me here a small collection of synths. I have my Alteria Mini Brute. I've got a Cold Volk Keys. Uh, so this is a, a monophonic uh, synthesizer. This is a polyphonic synthesizer, even though it's smaller. Uh, this is the Volker Beats, which is an analog drum machine. And then I've got my cold little bit synth, which is really, really cool. You stick them all together and you can make your own synth by clicking things in and kids love them. It's great fun. Right, so, in order to understand how synthesizers work, we first need to talk about oscillators. They're just tiny little computery things that, you know, some wires and things that you can solder together. And they basically make a pattern, and they make a re repeated pattern, and by doing that, if we then connect a uh, sound source to that, we can then hear that pattern, and those patterns are called waves. I think this is the Niagara Falls, I believe, if Google Research did me right. So, um, there are different types of waves that we, that we can use to make music. There are square waves, which we might recognize from being developers, you know, this is the kind of binary on and off kind of um, pattern that we're used to seeing. Uh, there are also sine waves, which are a bit more kind of analog you know, kind of, uh, like the, the normal waves that you would see in, in, in the sky, sort of drifting along with the radio. Um, there are also triangle waves, which are, which are really, really uh, nice sounding. And one of my favorites is the sawtooth. And the great thing about the sawtooth is it can go this way, and it can also go that way. And so, depending on which direction you, you play it, it makes different sounds. And then, of course, there is our long departed Google wave. That's also the second. Okay, and the final wave that we can make is noise. Uh, it's so called because that's all it is. It's just noise. It makes, uh, it, it's the kind of, for any of you that were born after the uh, 90s, uh, this is what our televisions would look like in between channels when we're trying to flip through. And it's what the, uh, those old analog radios still sound like today. So, let's have a look at what these things sound like. So hopefully, uh, we should also be able to visualize them. So let's run my visualizer. I'll have to do it. Also got a camera. So, uh, we saw those different waves on the screen, so let's just first of all see what a um, sawtooth sounds like. Maybe, let's turn down all the effects. So it's just 
kind of like a very boring kind of beeping noise, but you can kind of hear the sound kind of goes up and then sort of stops. And then if we change that to a square wave, it kind of sounds pretty similar. And then a triangle wave, you know, sort of as you remember, goes up and down. It's a bit more of a, of a softer sound. And then one of my favourites is, is noise. So that's how we used to listen to television back before you were all born, if you were only born in the 90s. And as, it, as I say, it, it's just noise. Which, actually, according to my wife, that's what the rest of my music sounds like. So, I don't know. Right, anyway. Okay, so we've got a basic understanding, maybe, of, of waves. Um, so the next thing you'd need to know about if you want to get into synthesizers are envelopes. And so we have an example here, attack, decay, sustain, release. You may think that's kind of some killer move on some kind of Tekken game, but it's actually a lot easier than those combo moves on there. Um, I don't know how far you can see this, but uh, so an envelope is just basically a way of changing the, the wave. Instead of it just being the kind of normal sort of triangle wave as you go along, we can, we can affect the way that it, the, the shape of it. So when you press the key, that's where it begins an attack. Let's go back to a nice one. And then when I let go, that's the end, at the very end, uh, where it says release. So that's sort of note on and note off, that's kind of the concept it's using. So attack is the amount of time it takes to go from zero to the highest possible sound level that you've set your uh, volume for. And then decay is the time it takes to go from the highest possible volume to the sustained volume. And sustained isn't the time, it's actually the kind of volume of that uh, envelope. And then release is the amount of time it takes, once you've taken your finger off the key, for the sound to kind of die away and stop being. So if we just have a look at that, so this is just uh, the normal, I don't know if you can actually see so well on the camera. Which one? Which one? So this is when you, when you press the note normally, and you take your finger off, the sound stops. If we increase both the attack and delay, it takes a little bit longer, so with the attack it takes a little bit longer for the sound to, the, the main sound to happen. If we turn off the attack and just have decay, it's a bit more subtle, but it changes the sound. And then if we increase the release, which is the end of it, when I take my finger off the note, you'll see it will still carry on with music. Cool. So that's uh, envelopes in, uh, in its basics. See what's next. Right, so you're thinking, oh, that was all really interesting. These instruments look really, really cool, but we're developers, you know, we're, we're techie people. Why are you telling us about hardware instruments? Well, there's this thing called um, Sonic Pi, or as I prefer, Sonic Pi, um, which is a way of uh, making music for, uh, essentially for kids that it was written for. So it's written in Ruby, so you write Ruby code, and then you use that to make music. That runs on top of something called Super Collider, which is this amazing but suit, uh, complicated um, digital synthesizer. Unlike all of these ones here, which are analog, uh, Super Collider is, is a digital synthesizer, so it lives inside your computer. And you have other ways of using it, as well as Sonic Pi. You could also use uh, Overtone, which I believe is Closure, if, if that interests you in any way. Um, but it's basically a way of writing code to make music. And so when I first started using Sonic Pi, I got really confused because it's like I've got to write code to make music, and I'm not very good at code anyway. And so when I looked at this, it was all a bit confusing. But, but now you can see from the, just the two minutes of me explaining, we've, we've, we're using a sawtooth synth, we're playing 60, which is the notation to say basically middle C on the piano. And we're increasing the attack, decay, sustain, and release. And you're like, oh, I know all that. We just did that a minute ago. So let's see how that sounds in Sonic Pi. Oh, my clothes. My text messages and my email. Right. Right. Uh -huh. right, so Sonic Pi. So if we just play the 
first bit. Uh, hands up if any of you have actually seen this or played with it. Yeah, yeah, if you cool. So you, you don't have to know Ruby because this is, as I say, it's meant for kids. So if kids can do it, you can do it. So it's really simple. So we just right here, play 60, and we run this. And it breaks, so we restart it. And all computers. Right. Oh, by the way, Sonic Pi was made in the UK by a chap called Sam Aaron, who's super awesome. You should all follow him on Twitter. Hey, so. So it's a bit dark and a bit hard to see, but basically we can play the uh, middle C. And if we get rid of that and use this one instead, we can then use a sawtooth sort of synthesizer, which sounds a bit more like this. That's pretty close, isn't it? So digital, analog, that's pretty cool. And now we can go to the examples we saw on the slides and add some attack, delay, sustain, and release. And you can kind of see how the, how the note changes. This is exactly like we just did over here. That's pretty cool, right? And once you kind of have these concepts of pronounce it, just play a note, change the way it sounds a little bit, then play another note, you can then, if you're like one of the contributors, oh, I've lost my mouse. If you're one of the contributors, like one of the contributors to Sonic Pi, he then wrote this song, which you might recognise. So it seems pretty much like we were doing is just playing some notes, changing the, the attack and the delay and the release, sticking in some um, some some noise to make the drums, and making. Does anyone know what this is? You do. Excellent. Right. Should, um, it should connect to my device 
and send in these notes and play them and sleep for the duration of 0.5 seconds. So, fingers crossed, then regards. machine doesn't seem to want to play. Oh, well. okay. Anyway, let's see. What else we do? Ah, yes. So, imagine you're uh, writing tests, as we all do, and, you know, you want to know that your tests are passing, or if they're failing, you can have, like, output on your screen. But I thought, wouldn't it be more fun to have musical notes play instead? And so... Do any of you uh, use um, Minitest? A uh, few of you, cool. So I've, I go to the written a plugin for Minitest that uh, will play music when your tests are passing or failing. Right, let's look. So if we just have a look at the code. So this is my example app, and I, I've got some good tests that, as, you know, as we would all write, that if you want your test to pass, you just return true. If you want it to fail, you return false. That's how you write good tests, I'm pretty sure. 
And so if we run the test runner, Oh, um, yeah, that's kind of the 
that is really cool. Um, what else have we got? Ah, yes, right. So, um, we've gone through uh, playing with instruments, then we were, uh, so physical instruments, then we were playing with uh, Sonic Pi, and then we were controlling the physical instruments from the computer. And I know what you're all thinking, it's like, oh, this is really cool. But this, this code here looked a bit, a bit rubbish. Um, what was really good was, was Sonic Pi. It's, a, it's an amazing just uh, editor. It's got so much cool stuff behind it, like it deals with all of the threading, and so you can have multiple things running at the same time, and you can have multiple musical loops, and it's, you know, it's meant for like 10 year old kids. So why couldn't we use Sonic Pi to control the instruments? Well, there's no support yet in Sonic Pi, um, but there will, uh, for MIDI instruments, but there will be soon. So in absence of that, I kind of hacked in some support. Let's have a look. to a computer in a former life but it hates me so much. Okay, it 
as well can a split second ago.